right, hello everybody. This is Michael here today with a, <laughs> I'm kind of um, all weaved up in the, uh, oh, in my display here, there we go. I'm trying something new today, so bear with me while I, uh, while I figure it all out and get it all set up for you <laughs> nicely. Um, I, uh, I'm going to try to paint some clouds today, but I wanted to talk about David Hockney first, who is my kind of in inspiration for wanting to do this today. He, um, well, let me pull up a picture here. I just had him up. There we go. This is David Hockney. He's um, in his 80s, um, and he lives in Normandy, and um, he paints every day. Here's, he, here's him with his dog and him and his easel. And he's um, been sharing some of his recent paintings during this last couple months. Um, he's, by the way, one of my favorite painters, um, uh, if not my favorite right now. Um, but let's just look at some of the stuff he's been doing. This, these are just uh, little paintings of his house. Um, little paintings of his house here he's been doing. Um, but his thing recently has been just painting nature and he'll do it all actually on his iPad a lot of the time which is pretty cool um, for him to adopt new technologies um, later in his life is pretty cool he, and he's been doing that his whole life he's uh, adopted the newest technologies in picture making just because he's uh, excited about them um, so here's some of his iPad paintings he's done. They're very nice. They're very quickly done, you can tell. Um, but in an interview with him, somebody asked, like, how are you dealing with all the bad news around the world right now? And he said, oh, that's, the bad news is on TV. <laughs> and he says, there's good news all around us. And the a reporter said, what, what do you mean there's good news all around us? He said, it's the beginning of spring and I totally know what he, me he means there is that um, people don't notice anymore but they used to notice when spring started every year I mean we notice we know that it's spring but to really look at and see all the beauty around us and all the new life forming um, as he he does with these trees here um, and he's got tons of them tons of them so these are all iPad drawings. And he kind of put out a call, um, not a call, but he, he encouraged others um, to join and, uh, and draw springtime, draw the beauty around us and look for something beauty. There's beautiful things everywhere, especially in the spring. Here's just looking down at one of his potted plants. Um, he's also got some animated paintings, which is kind of fun. Um, where he kind of just has things moving, uh, which is really nice. There was one of a sunrise that I loved where he, uh, he just drew it on the iPad like this. And then as the sun rose, as did, uh, he changed the colors. He just would drag and drop the colors as the colors changed around him. So it was more a study of like, uh, the colors changing than the drawing because the drawing didn't really change. I thought that was so cool. And I might try the same thing myself sometime. But for now, uh, let me figure this out. Okay, there we go. All right, hi. For now, um, I thought it would be fun to paint a cloud today because I don't know if you've looked outside today or been outside, but the clouds are just amazing. Um, throughout the morning, it's just been wonderful. So. Let me open a picture of a cloud I took uh, just not 10 minutes ago while I was running around getting this ready. Um, download, there we go. So this is a cloud. Ooh, it's very big. Let me shrink it down to size. Um, come on. Let's get smaller. Okay. And smaller. So I was looking up at the clouds like, wow, that is a beautiful thing about spring. Here was one, just a few. Clouds. 
I'll try not to put it in front of my face. Actually, I might have to. Uh, let me move me. So, sorry for the uh, futz in here. I just, ing, I don't really need to be seen too much. There we go. And then I'll move the clouds. So yeah, look at these nice clouds. Uh, not a great picture, but um, but I got what I needed there. With clouds, you don't need to really, you could make up the shape a little bit, but really what I'm concerned with is the texture and, and just the colors of them and how to make them. Now one thing I notice is that the uh, picture on my screen here of, of these clouds that I took, even though I just took the picture, the color of the sky is completely wrong. The camera doesn't get it right. Um, not completely wrong, it's still blue, but it's just not as bright and maybe lighter purpley blue. But that's, I guess, the trade-off you get with being able to use the computer um, or a phone or whatever to look at pictures. But in real life, as you can see in uh, uh, Hockney's pictures, um, real life has a lot more color. I mean, he definitely doesn't even follow real life rules. He kind of makes them way more colorful even. But um, anyway, let's get back to it. So yeah, let's, um, oops, there we go. Um, I'm going to use acrylic paint today. So that's something I haven't done on the video. Um, I have this type of paint here, which is Liquitex. It's kind of expensive, but it's um, really nice to work with. But if you are at home and you have any kind of craft paint, um, you can do this. Uh, if you don't have paint, you'll find that you could probably get something even with crayons or pencils or whatever get something out of the video because really I'm just talking about how to see clouds so you could use anything but I'm gonna use acrylic paint today um, I have this medium too that's supposed to slow down the drying time but I don't know about that I don't know it seems not to do much um, I'm using a piece of wax paper for my um, palette so I can mix my colors on it and then I can just throw it away when I'm done because Acrylic paint just hardens into a kind of a plasticky mess. Um, if you, and it dries so fast that it's usually hardened by the time I'm done on my palette. Then I have to scrape it and it's hard. So I figured out, hey, wax paper works. All right. Um, so wet my brush a little bit. Looking at this cloud, we see. I have a little bit of the tree. I'm going to actually add that into my painting there. So um, let me first, I'm going to start with a sketch just to get kind of the shapes I want. Now, I have it lined up here, but for me, I'm actually I'm going to. So I'm going to just quickly draw the parts of this. So I see the, the line of the tree, which is like, as I'm just roughly, again, it doesn't have to be exact. Use kind of the shape of the tree outline with some holes in it. Tree holes where I can see the sky. Um, these little tiny ones up here. Something like that. And then my main clouds. Um, now I can kind of make this up, but I'm going to sort of be copying the clouds that I see in this little picture. Just the outline of them. So, But I'm also going to keep in mind my canvas here, which is actually just a plank of wood. I think I got a Goodwill for a dollar, dollar fifty. Um, yeah, thrift store, like old panels. It was, uh, you can kind of see, this was a, I think a sunflower was, was just a picture of a sunflower on a piece of wood. So I painted over it with white first. And that's actually how I get most of my painting surfaces. I don't, I've, uh, I'll buy canvases when I want something really nice, but all my practices and little pieces I do, I use um, just wood panels I painted white, and it's cheap. And actually the smoothness is almost nicer um, than canvas in a way. 
All right, so I've got a little bit of this cloud. And now instead of doing this cloud overlapping the tree all the way, I think I'm going to end it like here. So I'm going to just slight difference. And that, that'll show up more in the painting than in my drawing. Here we go. Um, cool. It's also like a streak of white on the left, but I'll deal with that later. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So there we go. Now I'm going to make this, I'm going to start mixing some colors. I wonder if this light works, helps or hurts. I feel like it might make the, uh, yeah, that kind of helps. My sketch is very light, so don't worry if you can't see it very well. Um, but I will now try to make it a little bigger. Let's see. There we go. And I can actually make this a little bigger. Yeah, I think that's nice. So we're painting clouds. Um, my canvas is white, though I can see kind of through it. You can, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but I can s see a faint flower painted under there. So I want, I'm probably going to cover, end up covering the whole thing. Though if you have a white piece of paper or white canvas that is clean, um, you can use that white um, as the brightest areas of your painting. But I'm going to have to paint some pure white on, it looks like. Now, what I like to do with uh, skies when they have cloud is to paint around the clouds, and that should give us the shape, and then I'll do the details inside. So what I mean by paint around the clouds is that I'm going to do the blue of the sky before the clouds, and I'm not going to paint the whole sky blue. I'm going to kind of paint around the clouds. Because if you try to do white clouds on top of blue, you because of the nature of paint and most mediums, you can kind of see through it a little bit. So it's going to be pretty hard to just paint a white cloud on blue without getting a little bit of that blue coming through the white. But if you just leave the white canvas there, then you got white on white and it's nice and bright, as they say. Okay. Uh, so to mix this color of the sky, I'm going to start with this blue. This is a fa phalo -senine blue. I don't know. Um, not too s little. Uh, if you use too little on your palette, it'll dry up really fast, I found. But too, you don't want to waste either. I'm going to use a tiny bit of red. And I'm not going to. I'm going to use a very little of this on here because I don't see any other red in the whole painting. And then I'm going to use a little bit of yellow. I'm just going to give it to myself just in case. And then I think I'm going to need white, which is not in front of me. What the heck? Ah, there we go. So white's going to be necessary to make this blue brighter. So I've got white, blue, a little tiny bit of red and yellow. So now I'm going to start with the blue. I'm going to mix it right here. And I'm going to add white into it and see what color I get. That's actually a really nice, nice blue. But uh, it's a little bit too bright. It's a little bit too too much white and also probably a little bit too much blue a little so I'm gonna add a little bit of red into that maybe half of what I poured out and see what we're at mm, that dimmed it down a little bit made it a little darker um, and this type of blue seems to be a little bit yellow so this is actually taming it back down it's not turned it purple yet so I'm gonna add more red into it because I actually want maybe a little bit of a purple tint All right, mm, that's all right. I'm gonna see what yellow does to it in a little test area. Mm, no, yellow would turn it more into a, a greenish color. I think I actually need a little bit more red. 
I want to get this color right because this is going to be most of my painting. Um, all right, so a little bit more red into this color. Let's see. I'm being cautious by like spreading some red over here and then over here so that I don't overdo it. All right, that'll do, I think. Now maybe I'll make a little bit lighter version it, of it on this side. So I have two, sorry, this view isn't great. But I have two colors mixed here. Now what I'm going to do is paint around all of the clouds. So the, the top area looks darker than the bottom. So I'm going to start with the top and just paint all the way up to those lines. And I got to go kind of quick because this paint does dry mighty fast. Oh, let me mix this slow dry medium into it. That should help, but I have found that it's not super helpful. But maybe it'll give me a couple extra seconds. So when I get to the edges of the clouds, I'm purposely not doing any straight lines. Um, there's very little straight lines just in nature in general, um, but especially in clouds and things that are wispy like this, there's not really... <laughs> just have fun with this part. This is fun because you can't really mess it up. You can just just leave just make sure you leave yourself some white area. Maybe I'll just mix in some of that lighter blue. Try to blend the two areas together a little bit. While it's still while I still can. Okay, um, all right, almost done. almost mixed a little bit too little paint. I feel myself struggling a little bit to get to fill all the area. And make sure you mix enough paint that don't waste any. Or you can waste a little bit. It's better to waste a little bit probably than to not pour enough and then have a bad painting or mess up your painting. Because <coughs> sometimes it's hard to mix the same color again. Alright, now I'm going to put in the those little spots of oops those ones should be white because there's a cloud behind it so i'm actually gonna wipe that out as best i can maybe i can quickly with a little bit of water hmm. oh well okay fix that later okay a little bit in here All right, that's pretty good. Now, while I have this white here, I'm going to try to add, there's like this smeary section on the left. I'm intrigued by uh, this area here. So I'm just going to quickly get a little bit of this light. I just added a little bit of white to my brush, and since it's still wet, it won't come through. This is kind of what I was talking about if I tried to paint a cloud on top of blue. Um, it might be difficult to get that white through, but that's what I kind of want here. So it's just a little bit. Maybe there's a little bit here too of that same wispy kind of behind the cloud cloud. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and get that kind of work from the further away things first um, and then get closer. So this this wispy stuff first, and then I'll do this main cloud. And then probably last, I'll do that tree. All right. So when you're working with acrylic or anything that dries fast, you want to wash your brush kind of often, more often than I probably do. Because uh, I've had this brush for a while now, and it's still nice because I, I've been pretty diligent about um, 
washing it. Now, where did I put that? Oh, I used my paper towel to fix a mistake. Okay, keep a paper towel on hand. Next week, I'll uh, try to <laughs> get this video lined up a little bit better. But for now, it'll work. Let me just check in. Hi, Rochelle. Hi, Robin. Forgot to look at the little comments. So now I can see you. And thank you for telling me it looks good. It's just blue so far, but I'll get there. Okay. Now, the next step, I'm going to look at the... Uh, clouds themselves so in order to do this better I'm gonna zoom in to that cloud and block my face uh, so oh. so here is this cloud um, there's white areas of it pure white towards the top right kind of on the edges but other than that it's a lot of gray so I'm gonna Take this color I have of blue on my palette, and I'm going to try to get that light gray um, color. So I'll mix in the white. So now I have like a, a light blue right here. Now I don't want light blue though, I want gray. So I got to add a little bit of more red, which I ran out of. So I'll pour a little bit more. I'm mixing a gray now. So red should give me like a purple or this light will be kind of like a lavender. And lavender is nice, but I still want to gray it out. So the opposite of purple on a color wheel is yellow. So I add a little bit of yellow and that should neutralize it. Yeah, into a, you probably can't see the color gray on the screen, but I'll tell you, it's a decent gray add a little bit more purple in because I kind of want a little bit of purple yellow let's see I don't want it to turn brown so I just gotta add a little bit more blue okay I think that's good now I'm gonna just try it out on my yeah that looks good so this gray I'm gonna put only where I see the darkest or not actually this is kind of a medium gray so I'm just gonna everywhere I see kind of gray which is towards the middle of these forms um, and then it kind of is all over it's basically the shadow of the cloud on itself I think um, I think that's what's going on at least so I can kind of fix what I did earlier um, Add a few more little wisps here and there, but mainly just look at all the gray area. Um, it's a little bit lighter um, up at the top, so I need a little bit more white. Where'd I put that white? Where'd I put that white? Ah, all right, a little bit more white, yeah. So. You'll see this this process. I'm actually putting a lot of care into these clouds. Um, I, for years of my life, and I'm sure all of you uh, as well, have painted clouds uh, or drawn clouds in sort of a cartoony manner, maybe flat on the bottom with some uh, some little uh, little um, round things on top or something. Um, we all do it, and that's cool. It's, it's a nice way to paint clouds, but it's possible to paint clouds more realistic and more, maybe with more care and, and love in e each one, because as I paint this, I kind of, um, I start to kind of get a character with each cloud and have a, a relationship with each one. So I'm just adding white now because uh, I want to lighten up this gray a hair. Um, I'm actually going to make it a little bit gray too by adding a little bit more red and a little bit more yellow. There we go, that's much more gray. Okay, and I'll paint that on in here. Just to get a little variation in what I just did. Color variation. Alright, now I'm going to mix the white in with that gray and get a little bit lighter. And I'm just kind of working my way bright now. So I'll uh, put this, put
put this in where I see light gray areas uh, that are going to be kind of hanging out around the dark gray areas I just did. Uh, and I think this would be the, maybe the color to do the little wisps that go out. Those are those little messy, messy things. And those actually might be better when my brush is a little drier. So I'm going to hold off on doing any more. Just thought of that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to make them a little bit more solid. They're looking a little scribbly, but that's okay. All right. Maybe maybe even a little bit of this gray in this uh yeah so what I said before is a, I'm, a maybe a dry brush effect might be good for the edges so what I'm gonna do is wipe off a lot of the excess paint onto my palette here and I think this should be enough yeah now I barely have any paint so when I drag my brush I get kind of I don't get a smooth line I get like little tiny you can see almost each uh little hair on my brush and that's kind of what I want to get these wispies around the side and wispies down here Oops. cool now this top cloud is very wispy but most clouds usually have uh, at least one harder edge that's um, it's not straight but it's a uh, but it's Solid, it's a solid transition from the dark blue sky to the bright white, um, which this uh, bottom cloud kind of has. Let me see if I can point at it. Uh, that one. <laughs> and the one on, on the right. But this the top cloud is kind of more wispy. So I'll wash my brush. And I'm going to now make sure it's nice and clean and I'm actually going to use pure white now because <coughs> I want to get the highlights the, the brightest areas and you know what I'm actually going to add because I want it to look even brighter maybe even than real life I'm going to add a little bit careful that I don't get blue because I want it to be green um, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to my white to make it a little sunny. All right, so now that I've got that, I'm going to um, just draw around where the brightest areas are, which are going to be along the tops of where the sun's hitting it. So along the top edge of your clouds, and there will be maybe a little bit of it in inside the cloud, especially in this wispy one. Um, Like that, there's some of this in here. All right, and then I'm going to go up to this top cloud and wisp around the edges, especially the top edge. Actually, I'm going to make this into a dry brush again by uh, wiping most of the paint off. And then And you can kind of see that coming in. Thank you. Uh, let's see. All right. I'm going to wait to do more on the clouds because uh, I think once that dries completely, I'll be able to add even brighter white on top. Um, so now I'm going to just do a little bit of work on that tree using the exact same method that I just did to, to start these clouds. Um, yeah, so I'm going to kind of use different colors though. So I'm going to look at, look at it. We've got greens, like mid greens, and then we got dark greens and then black pretty much. Yeah. Just black for the, uh, for the sticks. <laughs> so I'm going to do the sticks first, that black. And instead of pouring my black color, I'm actually going to mix the black because I have paint on my palette. So I'm 
how I do that is make a dark purple, which is just blue and red. So I'll make a dark purple. And you know what? That's pretty close to black. But now I'm going to use a little bit of yellow. The yellow will brighten it up, but it'll also make it grayer. Because right now it's looking a little purple. So this is looking pretty black right here. Maybe a little bit purple. So you know, I guess I could try to add a little bit more. There we go. So it's at least a very dark gray. Um, and I just mixed it out of red, blue, and a little tiny bit of yellow to neutralize. Okay, now I'm gonna look at my tree here and just try to draw uh, the shapes I see that are black. I'm not gonna try to draw the lines going all the way through because I can't see them going all the way through and if I can't see it, I shouldn't paint it. At least, at least today. Someday I hope to get to the point where I can have enough memory of painting and drawing things that I can do things from memory. But as a student of art, as yourselves and myself, um, I find it's much, much more advantageous and you'll grow a lot faster if you use reference and if you use a picture of something to know what it really looks like or you use real life even better. But um, beware of just making things up because we, it's fun, but you won't get much better doing it. Um, of course, you still should do it um, for fun, but if you're trying to learn, if you're in class, if you're trying to get better at your, pe at your art, um, use, resp use reference. If you're trying to relax, then let the brain wander, of course. Okay, I've got some of the blacks that I wanted. Now I'm going to do the same thing where I work my way up to the brights. So I'm going to use this black, but I want it to be more green now. So I'll make a quick green with yellow and blue over here. And then I'm going to kind of mix them together until I get a desired dark green, which I think that's good. It's close to black, but it's a dark green. So now I'm going to just put that in everywhere I see the darkest green. And I'm going to, how should I do this? I could do a little bit more scribbly. I'm just going to do really short little scribbly motions with my brush. Um, and you'll learn your own uh, sort of vocabulary, if you will, for painting. But if you do enough drawing or painting you can do you, I have a whole whole vocabulary of my own with pencil too um, but as you do it more you'll learn little motions you're like oh I like these little squigglies and you'll use little squigglies in a lot of your drawings or maybe you like to just do little dots uh, and that's awesome and everybody's got their own little marks that they like to make um, so enjoy those and figure out how to use them to draw things so I use little scribbles all the time, and I use them a little bit in those clouds, and I'm now I'm using them in the tree. Two different subjects, but the same method. Just scribbling around. All right. I wonder if I can focus my camera a little bit more. Mm, not really. It's a little bit blurry. I guess that's just how it's going to be for now. Okay, I need more yellow because getting brighter, I ran out of yellow, and I need to get brighter. So let's add yellow into this mix because I want to get gradually brighter. Let's see what we got here. I got a, actually that's a really bright green, so I need to mix more of my dark back in. Okay, now I've got kind of a medium green. It's more of a yellowy green too because I added yellow. So I'm going to put start putting that in. Actually, this is a little bit darker even in certain areas, so I want to brighten it up a little bit. There we go. And now this medium green, I'm going to paint everywhere. Kind of look for the brighter areas, not the darkest darks, but pretty much around that area. Um, 
actually notice the color I mixed right now is kind of more towards the brighter areas. I meant to mix a darker color, but I'm just going to adjust. And now this is actually a kind of a brighter area. So I'll go back into shadow to get that other value. So yeah, even with the tree, because I left a white area, it's a lot easier to get that green to show up bright. Um, where I do have blue, it's coming out a little bit dark. So, okay. I'm going to add a blue into this to get it back darker. Um, a little bit of the black. Okay, now I'm going to go in with this medium tone and fill in the areas. Every time I catch myself not looking at my reference, I make myself look back at it because... Uh, it's easy to forget what you're doing when you get lost in it, especially in something like a tree. It's easy to forget, like, oh, shoot, I'm drawing a specific tree. All right, let's see. Let's see if I can show you my a little bit more detail. Yeah, and you can see how the different greens start to layer up there. So I'm going to mix a little bit more of a yellowy green um, and let's see hold it somewhere you can uh, <laughs> this is like a puzzle it's backwards uh, there we go so now I can kind of just yeah I'm just doing this sort of motion drop 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 just like that just filling it in and leaving those stems but going over parts of them. All right, I think that's pretty good so far. Let's refocus my camera back down. There we go, and then I'll turn it so it matches what you're seeing. Okay. I've got this rubber mat that I um, use on my desk when I'm painting on it so I can paint right on my desk and not have to worry about getting a little bit of paints on it because it's rubber and I just reuse it all the time. All right, it's looking pretty good. I'm, it's looking a little bit closer. I can see that I need to go much darker in those uh, black areas. So let's go back to that. I'm gonna kind of mix a little bit more by adding the blue and the red together and adding a little bit of the yellow. Alright, more yellow, accidentally went a little bit too blue there, there we go, I want a dark green, there we go, that's a, that's a little much darker, so I'm going to just go right over the dark parts again, just because I like contrast, I don't like it to be uh, too l light, which s I think that's a problem in my own paintings. Um, they sometimes, uh, my, I, I have too much bright colors and I forget to make the shadows dark enough. So I've been trying to train myself to just risk it and go a little darker than maybe I'm comfortable with. Um, but maybe you don't have that problem. Or maybe you do too much darks. We all have kind of a unique relationship with art. All right. I think that's a little bit better contrast I actually might go in with actual black uh, in a little bit just in the way that I'm going to go through with some pure white now in the clouds now that I think uh, it's all dry up there so I'm actually going to run to my sink real quick too if you uh, can see here my water is very opaque and blue and I want it to be nice and clean so I'll be right back
thinking about you, Rochelle. I hope you're enjoying these clouds. It's nice when you're feeling blue to um, look for look for the beauty that is out there all around us. You know, sometimes it's hard to see. All right. So now that I've got a nice, clean brush, it's very clean. I want to get all the color off and nice clean water, uh, I can get a nice clean white that was hopefully brighter than I've had before. Oops. Sometimes there was like a drop of water on there. Ah, that's okay. I'll cover it up now. So kind of look, look for the brightest white again and draw with care that stuff that you see that's the brightest. And for you, you might see the brightest as, especially if you're seeing a different cloud, you might see different bright areas than I do. And that's okay, it's good. It's actually pr probably better to, sh to be honest with what, how you see the world. Not exactly what I'm thinking. I'm just giving you some pointers on maybe how, what to look for, or how to respond to it. Okay, let's see. Give me just those bright, 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 bright sprites. Right? That already looks a little bit better there. Um, now I want to make sure to get this stuff over here. Oh yeah, Rochelle. Well, I wish you the best. I wish you luck there on your uh, on your health. Let's see. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm get, I'm getting there. I think. Uh, what I want to do is a little bit more brights in this top one. I'm like feeling like I, I went a little bit too dark in the beginning, so I want to just keep adding more pure white, scumbling around. Um, because it's so wispy, I have the danger of overworking this one, for sure. But that's okay. Um. I'm noticing the hard edge on this bottom one um, that should exist, so I'm going to actually add that in. By hard edge, I mean that it's not so wispy along the top. It's kind of wispy along the bottom, and there's actually that highlight too going on there. It's interesting. There's a clouds seem to be a little bit of brighter on the bottom too. There's It's bright on the top. But instead of being pure shadow, some clouds like this bottom one, I'm actually seeing it's lighter just because of the shape. So that's cool to notice. All right. Um, I think I'm going to firm up the top of this cloud, even though it's pretty wispy in uh, my picture. I think maybe it would add definition to my picture if I just kind of connected those two and made that cloud a little bit firmer looking. Maybe something like that. And I'm noticing kind of a diagonal lilt to this cloud because of just the way I hold my brush. So I'm actually going to do the rest of it a little bit on the... I'm going to try to be a little bit more random with the way I move around. Cool. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I think the last thing to do here would be to just maybe dive into the shadow of the cloud a little bit more. Um, also, I could put a little bit more cloud in my tree here. So uh, that's because the cloud is going behind it. Okay, I'll probably go over sections of that a little bit. Um, yeah, you can kind of see how I'm uh, almost it's a push pull between the background and the foreground. Now I'm painting the background on top just because the trees have so many holes in them. Um, but then I'll probably, just to finish it up, add a little bit of 
light green maybe just to brighten up the edges of that tree because I it looks pretty similar to the picture but I think uh, adding bright a little bit more brightness would be special so yeah this would be a nice a nice little picture to have on my a little memory of this beautiful day and that's kind of what I'm looking to do with this lesson today is just to inspire you to uh, to go to look for something beautiful when when you especially if you're feeling down Rochelle um, it might be helpful to you to just find a flower that you like and try to draw it or at least just look at it for a while just adding little, those little wisps and you can see I'm, I use my finger to kind of give it a whew, little push in one direction and maybe like a whew, like that just to give it that cloudy kind of look and actually I'm liking that so much I think I'm going to do it around all the edges and catch whatever wet areas there may be cool all right now I'm going to do uh, go over a little bit more shadow in here because it's looking a little bit uh, flat maybe just like maybe the the one little shadow um, so I want to make a gray again let's watch my brush so let's get a little bit of the black that I made um, I might need more red actually then add a little bit of white yeah I need more red ran out of red and all I've got is blues and yellows and greens on my palette. If I had an orange or if I had a purple, I could add that in, but I didn't have this either. So, okay. All right. There, let's see what color I got now. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Uh, well, I'll tell you, I've got kind of a muddy green color that's turning gray. It's okay. That's, that's kind of grayish um, but it might be a little dark so I'm gonna add a little bit of white into it okay so I've got this dark darker gray let's see seeing it on the thing it looks still a little too dark so I'm gonna go ahead and use the rest of my white up okay and then you make a little mark that looks good and then just maybe through the areas as you see them of, of the darkest areas and by this point if you're following along your painting will look way different than mine and it'll need different things so if you notice that oh I don't have enough brights maybe this would be the time to do more brights uh, if you notice like I don't know maybe your yours doesn't the sky isn't blue enough or something I don't know um, you have to tell for yourself what you need in life and in painting um, so yep, a little bit of that have a little bit of this shadow down in here and maybe even a little bit here there I'm liking that and I actually have overdone it <laughs> again, so I wouldn't be surprised if after this video I go in and just because I'm liking this little cloud piece, I'm going to give it to Ginger. She probably would like it because she remarked on the clouds earlier too. Um, but I might go in and add a little bit more white. <laughs> Won't bore you with it though. Okay. I'm going to go a little tiny bit more dark blue just for this deepest part of the shadow, which is like right here. Don't go overboard, Michael. Maybe a little bit down here. Cool. I like that. <clears throat> now I'm going to um, make a lighter green for my edges here. So I'm going to make a nice and yellow green. All right, that's looking nice and bright. A little bit more of this. Okay, and then I'm going to use that bright green, mm, maybe even more yellow. Yellow is very bright color, obviously, um, and it will lighten up your color and make it more yellow for adding. So, ah, yeah, that's nice. Actually, 
actually make it a little bit too much. So it's just a dab of blue in there. All right. All right, that's good. Now I'm just gonna little tiny dots all over the brightest area of my tree here. which is where the sun's directly hitting it. Oops, that was a little too bright there. It's okay. <laughs> Add that to the list of things to fix. Um, because I'm kind of considering this as a gift to someone, I don't want to, uh, to ginger. I don't want to, uh, huge coffee truck outside my house. Um, I don't wanna, I'll take a little bit more c care in getting it right, so back and forth. It's, it's a little tiring, but you can, if you just care, you can just do that back and forth and have kind of fun with it. I'm really enjoying how this is looking so far. Um, I'm gonna take one more stab at that white, at the bright white, um, with a hair of yellow in it because I just I think that will brighten up the clouds a little bit and I didn't quite get the effect I wanted before I think because the water was so dirty <laughs> so I'm gonna get a little bit of white over here running out of room on my palette which is a good sign that means I've been working okay with a dab of yellow so a dab of yellow on this white and now I'm gonna go around around the areas. I can even go a little bit more yellow, I think. I have to be very careful not to do too much. Yeah, I just wanted a faint hint. Yeah, that looks good. Now this yellow, I'm going to do only sparingly. I don't want to do too much here. And I'm going to dole it down and do like kind of a little bit grayer version. Um, to fix that middle area that I maybe overdid. But I'm just a little bit of yellow just on the tips of these clouds. Just on the tips. Even though I don't see it, I do know that the yellow is a warm color. It's also a very bright color. So when I want something to look even brighter than white sometimes, even though it's not technically brighter than white, yellow just feels warmer and it just it feels like the sun is hitting it, even though I, it actually gets a little bit darker than the white I might have painted on. All right, now just a I want to get a little bit of a light gray um, and see if I can nab some of that other color and just mix it in. Gray. Yeah, this, this is just to go, go around that area that I feel like I overworked of the darkest dark. Maybe a little bit over here. Bring it all together. All right. And with that, I think I'm going to call it. Uh, it's a cloud anyways. It doesn't need to be super overworked. So let me uh, zoom in here. Let's see. I will get rid of my reference and I will turn it in a way that you can see it. Ooh, let's see left down left turn <laughs> now I'll uh, get it focused there we go hey there we go a little cloudy scene with um, See how it compares? I uh, I can see that my, my sky isn't so purple as the picture, but I kind of think mine might be closer to what the real sky looks like right now um, because the cameras kind of change colors slightly. So toss that one away because I got a better picture now um, and one that I spent an hour with you guys with, so it makes it even more special. Um, and with that, I'm going to sign off. Um. <sighs> Rochelle, Robin, thank you so much for watching. Everybody else that watches it, uh, this afterwards, um, 
I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you, uh, next time you draw clouds, um, try to draw them with a little more care and, and really get the uh, personality of each cloud. So, all right. I'll see you on Thursday for another art video.